the archive of the constitution also known as march in dialogue with stakeholders and partners the workshop included a public lecture by the founding director of the smithsonian's museum for african american history mr loni bunch titled the making and the impact of the national museum of african american uh, history and culture the museum and the archive of the constitution at the hill is being built to deepen and enrich south africa's national story of just how our constitution started the lecture was specifically relevant as we are currently celebrating Human Rights Month and to tell us more about what transpired at that lecture as well as the collaboration between the Constitution Hill and the Smithsonian Museum for African American History is Luan Nukaso who is the head of content curation and stakeholder manager of the March Museum at the Constitution Hill. A very good morning to you Luanda and uh, welcome. Morning, thank you. Now the Constitution Hill is introducing the museum and archive of the Constitution. Tell us why Corn Hill decided to embark on this venture. I think um, so many things are, have been developing and it's been in the making for about 15 years. And I think with uh, Ms. Dawn Robertson, the CEO of Constitution Hill, being on board, you know, certain things lining up in terms of provincial funds and also the Constitution Hill Trust, you know, coming on board, raising money. And also I think in terms of the discourse in our country, mm -hmm. the Constitution is really um, at the center of all our conversations. So I think it's perfect timing to find out its history, its origins. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but Advocate Temega Ngulaitobi has a book called The Land is Ours yeah. and the History of the Black, the First Black Constitutional Lawyers. So it's just enriching you know, the, the South African narrative when it comes to this constitution-making process, that it didn't just start in the 90s, you sure. know. It wasn't imposed by the West. We have a long tradition of, uh, you know, how this uh, constitution came to be and the values embodied in that constitution. Now, March will be the place where the origins of the constitution are being documented. Mm. Just how important is it for South Africans, I mean, to, to understand uh, and know such information? So, uh, one of the people I really admire, Justice Cameron, has a thing about um, in order to fight for, in, you know, to fight injustice today, you need to understand the intricacies of our history. Mm, true. And I really believe that if people don't understand the processes and the history of this document that we talk about all the time and we have such strong opinions about, it's very hard to sort of move forward if you don't know what informed its drafting, you know, who its drafters were. It wasn't just Kodesa 1, Kodesa 2 for the interim constitution and sure. the multi-party negotiations. It wasn't just the constitutional assembly. Its history is much richer and longer than that. And also it's a history that was accompanied by a revolution. So when I look at the constitution, I actually see a revolutionary document. And I think um, really for our forward movement, it's really important to understand where it came from. And just for, you know, a sense of being aware of history and recording our history, because I think sometimes as South Africans, as things are happening in the moment, you know, people don't regard that as history that's meant to be passed down yeah. to future generations. And having sort of a place to go where you can have that understanding and also give yourself some kind of context, you know, before making certain arguments I think is really key and lends credibility to anyone wanting to voice an opinion on this document. Know what it says, know Indeed. why it says that. Indeed. Now mm. talk us through the relationship between the Cornhill and the Smithsonian uh, Museum for African American History. Why was it important to forge such a relationship and how did it come about? Uh, okay, so last year we were fortunate enough, the team uh, that's building the museum, which includes uh, Lauren Siegel from Trace and Nabil Essa from Office 24-7, they're the designers and I do the content and all okay. of that. So we were fortunate to go on a trip funded by the U.S. consulate to go to the U.S. just to take a look at some of their museums. I mean, the Smithsonian has 19 museums and uh, the, muse the National Museum of African American History and Culture is their 19th one. Mm -hmm. So it's their most recent. So that team has just gone through this process that we are going through of how do you tell such a big story? You know, how do you tell a story that belongs to so many people and people are so opinionated about, you know, that sense of responsibility. So I think they were like the 10th museum that we saw and it was 
you know, it blew our minds. It, it, set, it set the standard for us, you know. It's not that we want to Americanize our story or our museum, yeah. but in terms of processes and thinking, I'll give you an example. So when you go to that museum, they don't talk about slaves, you know. They talk about enslaved people because there's a distinction. Enslaved people is a more accurate term. It tells you what happened to them, not what they were. So I was really yeah. intrigued by that thoughtfulness. And they also told us a story about how the exhibition is working so well that the security guards who are meant to be guarding the space are actually taking a look at the material and engaging with the material and they're going to the library and, you know, picking up books to enrich themselves. When I heard that story, for me, that's the definition of success. If we can set people on a path, you know, an educational path where they start at our museum and then carry on the journey when they leave in terms of wanting to gain that knowledge mm -hmm. and improve on that. For me, that was amazing. So that team, first of all, they're good people. They're mm -hmm. just genuinely good people. We just spent a week with them. They're amazing individuals. And also they're so generous in that their museum was 100 years in the making. Mm -hmm. So how did it eventually come to be opened by President Obama in 2016? So for us to gain some insight and to, to have those exchanges and to develop that friendship and that support has been amazing but we consider our partners truly every single South African you know that that uh, is interested in the Constitution and and even if you're not interested it guides your life in a way you may not mm -hmm. be aware mm -hmm. but it's so relevant in your life so for me those are our partners those are the people that we hope will come on board and help us with this project what we see ourselves as is a platform for people to come and tell these stories I mean we just had um, okay. Human Rights Day Right. You know, we only know that one picture from Human Rights Day when people are fleeing the police and being shot at. We don't know anything more than that, yet that was a turning point in our constitution-making process. So we want to go back and sort of find those nuggets, find those unknown events, find those unknown perspectives, and find those unknown people. And we hope people will sort of help us fill in the, the story. Because so much of our story, I think, is missing. We've crafted this one narrative, and it's much broader than that. It's, 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 it's more terrifying than that, but it also has joyful moments and triumphant moments, and I'm looking forward to telling it. And, and I'm particularly enthralled by that mm. concept that you talked about, that of uh, being a slave and enslavement. Mm. That is quite thought-provoking. Mm. Thanks for that. Mm. And uh, we appreciate your time this morning. No problem. Well, that is uh, Luando Klaso talking to us about the museum and the archive of the Constitution, which is set to open at the Constitution Hill in Johannesburg. This is Morning Life. Let's go for coffee now, shall we? Thank you.